So this is part three of my oil pressure exploration. So um, the first thing I want to correct is that in the previous video I said that these two oil pumps were identical except for this hex drive over here which drives the auxiliary pump. That's actually not true. Uh, I was looking inside this hole here and it looks like the S55 has got a larger cavity in there and uh, this probably accounts for the extra flow that they're talking about. When they said that they that they can achieve 80% higher flow rate, I think it's because they, they realized that they didn't need to change any of these veins or anything. They just needed to change the cavity inside because the cavity was constricting the flow. <clears throat> so it is true that the S55 oil pump mechanically can flow more oil. So for the rest of the video, I'm going to discuss uh, these two springs. This spring is the um, pressure relief spring for overpressure. And this spring is the spring which, um, when compressed, allows um, oil from the main oil rail through to this uh, cavity here to depress the pivot and release the pressure. And, and 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 decrease the pressure so we're going to look at these two springs and we're going to try and work out using mechanical engineering design principles at what pressures these springs start to take effect so let's go to Shigley so everyone who does mechanical engineering knows this book it's Shigley this is a very old edition and we can see he has the formula for spring force that's the the amount of spring force per compression that you get so it's very easy to just use this formula the only thing you really need to know here is that g is 80 gigapascals uh, because most spring steel is 80 gigapascals in sheer modulus okay so for this spring that goes in here i uh Count the number of turns, measure the diameter, measure the wire, and did a calculation of what the spring rate is. And then I looked at um, how much does this piston um, stick up, um, and how far does it go down before it lets uh, oil in through this hole inside here. Now uh, it starts to let oil through the hole at a certain depth and then it's fully open a little bit more um, and if you take those two numbers you get the, the range of pressure with which this will start let through, letting through oil into this cavity and after doing all those calculations I basically get that um, between 6.5 bar and 8.9 bar is when this will pump oil through here so in other words this oil pump can't pump more than 8.8 bar 8.9 bar because uh, this pivot will pivot down so that makes sense <clears throat> so now if you look at this you want to ask the question well at what pressure does this start to release oil uh, out this this hole here back into the pan now this is a bit more difficult to calculate because over here it's easy to work out the area of this uh, this piston. You just measure the diameter and you can get the area. But this ball inside here has got a contact area um, at the bottom, and the contact area is not exactly difficult, not exactly easy to work out because um, there's there's probably a lot of uh, hydrodynamics going on there. So I'm guessing they estimated this and then did some experiments to get the exact number and then you know basically adjusted their spring to get the pressure that they wanted but nonetheless I did the calculation by measuring the spring number of turns and so on and plumping plugging it into the formula and I used two uh, diameters I used the diameter of the contact ring um, for this ball so this this ball uh, it has a, a contact ring where it contacts down in there into the hole 
and then I measure the diameter of the ball um, as a whole. So between those two areas should be your pressure. And those pressures are basically between 9 and 22 bar. So I'm guessing anywhere like over 10 bar possibly, this pressure valve is going to release. Now 10 bar is very high. Um, so what's probably happening is it's never releasing oil through there. It's always um, limiting oil flow by pivoting. And uh, so of course I'm talking about the case here where the uh, oil pressure control solenoid is not doing any work. It's disconnected or something like that. So let's keep those numbers in mind and go and look at a chart that someone has generated. Alright, so this is a user on uh, BurmaPost.com and he has logged his N55 engine with the oil pressure solenoid disconnected and here it is with it connected and here it is disconnected. So if you want to pause your screen there, you can just look at this chart. So you can see what's happening here is that without the oil pressure control solenoid connector, this is getting all the way up to 8 bar, which is kind of in agreement with the calculation that I did. And the reason it's getting to 8 bar is because of um, pressure being relieved in to pivot the 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 main pivot down and that seems to be what's happening so it seems here theory and experiment have confirmed each other this is a very interesting result and it basically means that the idea of flipping the piston around is a, is a flawed idea because you're going to get over pressure through the relief valve which is going to be higher than nine bar and uh higher than nine bar probably probably isn't uh appropriate for this kind of engine. Anyway, so this is the next update to this whole experiment, so thanks for watching and stay tuned.